All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. We're getting stuck straight into this build today. We're going to do some quick stone statues. Now, I've got these miniatures from Zutertes. They're actually ready to go miniature statues. You could probably do this with any miniature you've got. If it's got that stone statue look that you're looking for, just go for it. Now, with this plastic, it's actually quite easy to get into with the craft knife. It's quite easy to sort of slice away at some of these pieces uh, to get that ruined look that I'm going for. You do have to remember though, slicing away here is just going to leave smooth cuts so you will need to sort of go in there and, and dig those out a little bit. I used a bit of a combination between the point of my craft knife here which is a bit old and dodgy so be very careful if you're doing it this way because you will snap off the edge of your craft blade if it's got the pointy tip on it. So just be very careful here. You can use other tools for this. If you're very careful as you go about it, the craft knife will do the job. You just want to rough up, uh, rough up those smooth cuts a little bit so that they don't look sliced off. Uh, you want these to be more ruined and broken off. So uh, yeah, it just takes a little bit of work to get these to look right. If you want to get some bullet hole type looks into these, some actual holes, the best way is just using the point of the craft knife point it straight in and just twirl it around till you get yourself a little bit of a hole dug out and then you might want to just rough up the edges of that hole so it doesn't look uh, perfectly round. As you can see here I'm also just using this little pointy tool here just to try and get some cracks engraved into the plastic. This does work, it takes a little bit of effort to get the cracks in there but you'll find that as you'll see in some of the final pictures you can see these cracks and they do look pretty cool. A little bit of extra work there but with this plastic as I said because it's quite soft it's quite easy to get into and get these marks done. This may vary depending on the type of plastic that you're trying to cut into. For me this is all I have on hand at the moment. I don't have a lot of 3D printed stuff available to me so I'm just sort of using what I've got on hand. Uh, ideally I would have loved to have got some larger scale miniatures to make into these statues but as I said this is what we've got. For the base I use very simple foam core here, the paper is removed from this stuff. I just cut it down to a rough shape so that it was sort of standing on some stones and a little bit higher up. Nothing too complicated about this, just cut out the rough shape that you're looking for and carve in some brick texture into it and that should be good to go. Now glue up for this section here is really simple, just a little spot of PVA glue and press those two together. Now for the miniature, I'm going to use some hot glue to glue this one down. Hopefully that'll help hold it in place a little bit stronger than the PVA glue would have. Make sure to be a bit careful here, don't use too much, otherwise you will get a fair bit of squeeze out from the bottom of the miniature, which will just look like little bubbles of glue, so you don't want that if you can help it. Now we come to the painting process for this one, and I am trying to keep this as simple as possible, so I'm not trying to give you the best or the right way to do this. This is just how I've gone about painting these up to get that stone look, and this seems to work pretty well for me. Hopefully you'll get something out of this, and if you do have any suggestions or tips, please leave comments in, uh, down below so that we can all learn together and, and hopefully improve on this technique somewhat. So going in here, I'm just giving the base and the model a bit of a base coat here with the dark stone. I'm going straight in and trying to cover up everything. These models are already pre-primed, but I have obviously made some dints into that prime coat. So I'm just going to go back in here and just cover everything up and get a nice uh, dark grey base coat to uh, build up from here. Once that coat is dry, we're going to go in now with our airbrush and some air paints from Army Painter. We're using the uniform grey here. We're just going to re-establish our zenithal highlight pretty much. And this is going to still be the base coat for our miniature, so a lot of these shades will still be visible towards the end. So we want to be quite careful about this and just spraying from the top of the model downwards, trying to retain some of the shadows of that darker grey that we had. Once that coat's dry, we can start adding in the rest of our texture here. Now this is a very simple technique. You could probably build on this and get a much better effect if you wanted to. I'm just using some thinned down brown paint here. This is some Magnolia Brown from Army Painter. And I'm just trying to speckle this on uh, with a brush here as you can see. You don't want to overdo this. You just want to get some small marks on here just to add a little bit more texture. 
as you can see this is coming up pretty good so far and next we're going to go in and do the exact same thing but we're actually going to use some white this time so again we want to water this down or make sure it's quite thin and we're just going to speckle this on you can see this a lot better with this brush some of these speckles you might see are quite large and you might think this is, <laughs> this is wrecking the model but these will dry up okay the paint is quite thin so it's not going to be it's not going to dry as complete white spots so this will still work out pretty well next thing i did was just using some of that white i've just grayed it down a little bit so i've just added a tiny little bit of gray into this white mixture and i'm just going in and sort of touching up some of the highlighted areas uh, just putting in some uh, very fine lines on some of the edges just to bring up some of the details here and make them a little bit more obvious I have also highlighted quite a few of the uh, ruined or broken parts of the statue here just because I feel like those parts will be exposed and a little bit brighter than the rest. As you can see here it is starting to come together really well and we can get ready now to move on to the last couple of steps for this project. So with the base I'm going to just sort of darken it down here with some dark tone. I'm going to try and avoid the model with this. I just really want to get this on the bricks around the base. This will help sort of separate those two pieces of the model but, you know, being the base and the statue itself. You can use whatever you like for this part of the process. I've just got some dark tone from Army Painter on hand so I'm going to be using that one. And next we're going to move on to adding some moss. So you would have seen this in my last video where I built this ruined piece of terrain you can see in the picture here. It is simply some PVA glue mixed in with some fine flocking. This stuff doesn't look good going on, but because the PVA glue will dry clear, you'll see that this actually comes together really well. It's a little bit finicky to put on, so get yourself a toothpick or a matchstick or something, and you just want to sort of put it on quite sparingly. You don't need a great lot on there. And just pick some parts out on the model and the base where you'd like to put some of this moss. Like I said, uh, go, go slow and uh, <laughs> see how you go. Don't put too much on because you can't really take it away. The final step I did here, which is completely optional, I have some of this green pigment powder here and I'm just going to go around and just add a tiny little bit of green tones to some of this area where the moss is. Now I can't stress this enough, you want to be very careful with this stuff, uh, you don't need a lot, a little bit goes a very long way uh, and don't overdo it on the model. So just a few little spots here and there where you want to add this and as you can see it will give just a really nice effect in the end. And that brings us to the end of this video. So as you can see, these do turn out pretty well. It may not be the best technique or the, the right way to do this, but I find this is quite, quite effective and really quick and easy to achieve this. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you'd like to support the channel, I would love your help. Uh, jump on over to my Patreon and you can subscribe there and help us out. Thank you to all those people that currently do. And I will see you guys in the next video.